good at picking off people. Kufro is more of a huge team fight kind of hero. So we'll see again, can he get more success here? RQ, man, doing the same exact thing, hoping for a different result. This is crazy. I mean, you know. <laughs> wow. Well, since we've already talked about this draft last time, I guess we don't really have to talk anymore. Skip. Yeah. <laughs> we'll just. We'll just fast forward to the land of Don. And it's gonna be very confusing, man. <laughs> well, confusing or not, it's the same draft for the next game. The land of Dawn awaits. It's RRQ and Falcon. Match point still for RRQ. Right. For the most part, I don't think there's any real big difference in the emblems. So again, this is an uncanny, similar game. I wonder if RRQ are gonna do things differently. Because in the early game, we did see that there's a lot of HP bars getting very, very low, but the first blood eventually was picked up by Falcon. So we'll see if RRQ can break the threat, the trend and actually get that first blood this time. I think the only difference here is this time, the XP lane is on the top side. <laughs> so that's how we know we're not, <laughs> you know, a, time, like yeah, we didn't time it's, travel. It's not a glitch, right? guys. We're not in the <laughs> Matrix. It's okay. Well, I mean, still, the fact here is Falcon looking to take this to game five and if they're happy with what they drafted previously, they might as well continue it. I think the biggest thing here for Vin specifically is to be a little bit more cautious on those initiations. But if you want to just take that risk, go for it. You do have, you know, that match advantage too. But still, I, I, I feel like even R7, right, going against Yellow Flash. Notice the difference too. Yellow Flash running with a flicker instead of the sprint like we saw previously. He makes it work, right? But I do think that Falcon has this draft figured out for now. But we can already see the presence from both teams now. But I got a feeling they may take it a little bit slower than what we've seen in the past. Not as aggressive in this first two minutes. Well, we have to see. I mean, R7 already doing so much better against the glue here. So small differences. But for the most part, I think we can see the big bulk of difference coming in as far as the turtle fight is considered, right? Because for both these teams, they definitely want to go aggressive towards that turtle, and I think that's where we're going to see the decisive moment in who gets the early game. Well, the turtle now spawned here. Both junglers in position, half health. R7 trying to clear that lane as well to get here with Clay. Vin making his way as well. Naomi also getting that level four available. Who takes it? Cannon's in a very bad spot in between three members, but finally Falcon is here to help. Clay finds the turtle. Ken stuck against the wall, will go down. So that is a first blood for the side of our Q. Yellow Flash sitting on top of R7. Oh. Wants to find revenge for his team. Will succeed in that one. So it's a one for one trade. The turtle goes to our RQ. The first blood goes to our RQ as well. So already a change. Again, we're just being reminded it's not the same <laughs> game, but in the mid, the mid lane, it's the same situation, right? Aggression, wave pushing, and I think the matchup we need to take a look at is also in that gold lane. If Zip X can still get a huge lead in the early game, there's no reason why he can't replicate the same results of the previous game. That is something that RRQ needs to keep in mind, and maybe they'll try and spend more time and resources to ensure that Skylar is the one snowballing instead. Well, check out this M4 stat here. Albert is the third player to surpass 200 kills in M Series, joining Chuka Guys and Oheb. So Albert, obviously, I mean, he's a. Everybody knows at this point, Albert is a incredible player, really a component here for RQ to work around. But even as a team, I mean, I would say that RQ in general, across the board, especially with you know the way that they've refined their play style on the macro and micro level, everything is apparent. But in terms of aggression, the aggressive play style, they like to go at it. Ooh, Skylar taking a lot of damage. Ken doesn't want to let him go. Skylar able to be on my way, but Zigzap has locked on. Oh. Vin goes down. They're going to look for it. Naomi in the tower. Nice wow. hook. And they find him. That's two kills for the side of the Falcons. There's two kills, and RRQ has no real answer. The early game from Falcon, yet again, showing to be very, very strong. The Beatrix and the Franco being a very deadly combo. For RRQ, though, they're just trying to recover and still waiting for the next neutral objective. Albert is still farming pretty okay, but the longer he lets this go on, the more he is susceptible to getting taken out by the damage that is scaling from the side of Falcon. Wow, look at that. The bottom turret already chunked down. It's almost completely gone here. 
Zipex, similar like last game, he's having a pretty good time on this Beatrix, as now they fight for the turtle. Yeah, Albert's gonna take his time this time, along with RQ, look of in, cocking up, trying to go, trying to land something, does not land though. Yellow Flash is on to Albert though. Albert takes the turtle, and now it's a battle. In the middle, Ken able to take out Vin, but Skylar takes out Ken, it's a one for two currently. No, three members of Falcon down. Albert finds Yellow Flash in the final moments of that fight. RQ takes the advantage. That's a three for two for our RQ. They're able to get a huge combo going in. And of course, with all the AOE they have in this early game, they got a bit of a lead. But later on, if they replicate the same kind of play style, remember, Zipex will be out damaging Skylar unless he gets nuked in the initial engage before that. So that's something that RQ needs to adjust once they go into the mid game. And looking at the emblems right now, Demon Slayer for both jungles. Nothing real too surprising, but with all the mages going mystery shop, oh. both teams are trying to go for early game aggression. Well, Albert, Albert got man. that, right? Uh, and I mean, even looking at emblems, looking at items here, the one thing that's apparent is why Fredrin is so is picked so often. You see that clump that Falcon really goes into when they're team fighting, especially around Naomi. But with the taunt and with the CC there, it's so strong here with his Fredrin pick especially when things kind of just fall into place and that burst potential is there with Clay and that damage over time from Skylar when he gets the Blazing Duet off. Now, it is going to take Skylar a little bit longer here to get to that online point for this quad, but still, you can't count Zip out, Zipex out just yet, right? He hasn't died. He's done a pretty good job farming up, and he's got the four assists, so weapon mastery Beatrix here is going to be scary as the game goes on. Of course, Naomi trying his best to ensure that Beatrix will actually be successful in the late game. RQ tries to defend this turret, but it's just too low. They'll be forced to back away as Zipex picks up that BOD. That's a lot of burst damage to anyone that gets set up by Naomi. And remember, in the late game, AoE will be favoring the side of Falcon, right? Justin going up against Clay. The Lunos has a lot of damage, but in the late game, it's only going to be single target. Whereas we saw that Justin in the late game on the Valentina, that's a lot of damage output to multiple people and multiple applications of the crowd control. Yeah, and this is exactly what Falcon want. This is why Zipex now going to be able to rotate up oh. onto this lane. Wait, a nice shot. Whoa, Comes we missed. On. Albert will get terrified. Ken able to secure it. Albert finally goes down. Turtle over the side of Falcon. And Ken wants more. Finds Vin. Clay able to pick up Ken, though. So it's two for one currently. Make that a three for one. Justin wants to try to lock onto R7, but R7's very, very oh. slippery. Tries to readjust himself, thinks it over, doesn't want to dive too deep because right now Falcon is on the rise. Wow, unfortunate for RQ there. Skyler was not there for that fight because, uh, I mean, a blazing duet at that point would have been crucial for that. But Falcon able to get the advantage now building on this gold lead. And that's exactly what I meant. Like taking that tower, Falcon focusing onto that gold lane was extremely important to how they move into the mid phase of this game. Skyler, on the other hand, gonna need to stay down here if they don't want to lose any more towers. That's why RRQ, they just keep going head to head, trying to go mechanics against mechanics. But honestly, if Falcon has set up so successfully to give themselves a huge one-man advantage and denying the Blazing Duet from that big team fight, RRQ at some point need to understand that there are some fights they need to back away from or at least approach differently. Maybe wait out some of the ultimates and then go in when Falcon is not expecting it. Oh, oh big Tyrant's Rage. They're going to capitalize. Dustin goes down and that's a nice kill into the pocket of Skylar. Try to get a little bit of chip damage onto that tower as Falcon decides to take off. But well, this is happening. Zipex claims more ground, taking away a tower on the top side. Falcons ba basically just making wins around the map where they can find them because, I mean, you got to watch out for Vin, right? The setup potential is there. You've also got to work on these objectives because as everything transitions on, we're only moments away from that first Lord here, and you want to be able to have that space to work with. So right now, Falcon still having that little bit of lead in terms of gold. Zipex now picking up the Malefic Roar here. That's going to be massive in terms of damage department, so RQ they got to be cautious how they approach this Lord. Skylar as well wants to be able to time that Blazing Duet, especially if for some reason Albert gets those taunts off that knock up on multiple members of Falcon. For the next fight though, RRQ 
Clay will have the glowing one ready, so that's a lot of DPS as Finn tries to engage a Ooh, fight. Oh, but he gets shut down. No Tyrant's Rage for RQ. Wait a second. Oh. R7 into the backside with the Blazing Duet. It's enough chip damage to take oh. down FX and Naomi. RQ showing dominance right now in these team fights. Yellow Flash now come back in along with Ken. Of course, use a flicker. Ken Decimate. doesn't have the death, or does have the decimation, but decides not to use it there. Falcon able to at least push them away from the ward, but they lose oh. a lot in that team fight. Not only that, R7 just took the purple. R7 takes the purple, which is, again, another insult to injury for the side of Falcon. Unfortunate for them, this is what we'll be talking about. R7 was able to go in towards that back line, and Zipex is not nearly strong enough to be a solo threat towards that Joy, and Finn goes in again. That was a beautiful cancel on that Tyrant's Rage. Falcon now may have a little bit of a possibility for this. The Lord Battle wow. Ken takes it, but a couple members getting low. R7 found by Naomi. It's a beautiful hook. Finn misses it. The outplay from Zipex is beautiful. Ken now going to try to move on to Skylar here. Push him back. RQ against the ropes. That's a weird back and forth coming in from RRQ. And Vin, so desperate to find the knockup onto Zipex, it just wasn't working out. Unfortunately, as nice to mention, on the Kufra, missing the Tyrant's Revenge is gonna actually leave you in such a vulnerable state. And Zipex completely took advantage of that. And for now, with all the members being so tanky, RRQ needs to find a different method of fighting aside from just picking off one of the tankier members. Maybe diving more towards Zipex and denying that DPS will work. I mean, we saw that successfully play out in the previous team fight. Well, right now, they've got to deal with this Lord on the top side. It is just the first one, so should be able to make quick work of it. Naomi, though, waiting for an angle if he can find one to get that numbers advantage. The tier two in the mid lane is going to go down here. Falcon full tempo mode here. 4K gold lead, and they're going for another turret. Definitely pushing the tempo for sure. Falcon trying to give everyone around the world a show right now, but we cannot count RQ out just yet. If you, if you count RQ out, you've seen what they can do, man. They can be gold be, uh, behind in gold, behind in numbers as well. It doesn't even matter. You need to take them seriously at every turn, and we've seen that in this game, at least, they found a bit more success in those big team fights. Of course, the next one wasn't that good, but they make adjustments on the fly. This is what they're famous for. So you can see that Falcon is still very much respecting the possibility of RRQ just coming out with a very unexpected play. They stick S4 just in case there's a death boost somewhere with five members from RRQ inside it. I mean, even with all that said about RRQ, right now, Falcon, you can say the same about them, right? I mean, they work really well with this gold lead, and they've been doing an amazing job at just protecting Zipex. And this was the case that they needed to solve when it came to game three and now game four, right? Zipex had a great time farming up. He's protected well from Naomi and Yellow Flash, and they're gonna push it down to the bottom Rise side. Naomi, Naomi lands a hook on Skyler. That's a big pick. Falcon now with the numbers advantage. Gonna try to push this lead. All damage off the board for RQ. R7 won't be able to do much against this lineup without someone else coming in. Minions now encroaching in onto the mid side. It does have a defense. So, Vin oh. tries to come in. Going to get stunned, immobilized, but Albert does find the taunt on to Justin. But Zip X brings out the Beer's Passion. R7 will fall. Ken able to still rise up, gets a double kill on to Vin. Falcon backing off, but finds so much in that push. Justin still alive after doing all that damage and with three members down, Falcon goes for the aggressive play. They might just go for the end here. They have the tools to make it happen. They're definitely going to try it. Brilliance comes out to dodge the hook with Skylar back on the field. Going to need to be a little bit careful here. Even though he's behind, he still packs a punch. Lord back on the field. This might be a Holy Mary play from Albert. He's trying to get in position to even take this, but he's going to get locked down. Ooh, Zip X melting down Albert. Albert Force Dash, no Hell Mary play here. Naomi was waiting. Sniper out, locked and loaded. Oh. That's a lot of damage. Boom. This is huge for Falcon. I was waiting for a boom goes the dynamite. But just like that, Falcon securing another Lord, furthering that gold lead. And they are prepped and ready to go for this march into the base that could just bring us to a game five here.
Arthur is struggling so hard right now because even if Skylar wants to go in in the Blazing Duet towards that back line, he can go with the win of nature, but Justin is still doing an insane amount of damage as well. And that is what is denying him the chance to just shut down Zipex. And this Beatrix is just so much damage coming out from the side of the Falcons. Definitely a lot of damage. Vin trying to push out. Yellow Flash along with holding it. Lord will get melted out. But Skylar with the Blazing Duet. Not enough though. Ken still in the field. Vin will be the first to fall in this fight. Ken down as well. Clay finally oh. finds it. Albert will be next. A double kill for Clay. Justin still looking for something. It's two for two currently. The Falcon maybe staying a little bit too long. Yellow Flash needs to be careful here. R7 and Skylar onto it. And that is a pause. Well, okay. Oof. That was heated. Not expecting that either, but I'm heated. Yeah, yep. This is heated match. And <laughs> I got to say, man, I was watching Yellow Flash. And, you know, Skyler was working on him, but still, it was a, what, a two-for-two two trade? They were holding on there, and it's, I mean, down to this moment, right? It looked like Falcon, like you mentioned, overstayed a little bit. So, could RQ turn that around? You're still working against a massive lead here for Falcon. Space advantage, item advantage. It's going to be a big blunder if something happens to Falcon and they slip, let, let, let this one slip out of their hands. For our Q though, it's a it's a breath of fresh air. They're really required to try and even attempt to come back. Fortunately, it all went to the hands of Clay. So now if they want to go for uh, more pickoffs, definitely the Chaos Balls are going to do a lot more damage. So that is good. But would you rather have the kills in the hands of Clay or in the hands of Skylar? Because right now both of them have, I don't know, they are having an equally difficult time trying to get to that back line. And even R7, you see that Falcon has adjusted and they're using all their crowd control to ensure that R7 cannot get an easy dive in. At this point, if RRQ wants to try and get someone in the back line, someone towards Zipex, I think they're required to sacrifice someone to that bloody hunt. They have to pick either either Clay, Skylar, or R7. One of them needs to take the, you know, take the crowd control. I feel like as long as Zipex runs free, He's going to be able to possibly carry Falcons to new heights right now. RQ, as we can see, there is a little bit of troubleshooting happening right now. Not the greatest time for that to happen, but it is still a heated match, as Nice who said. And honestly, I don't care who wins out in the best of five of this. I do hope that Falcon wins this one, because after these games, I want a full five. Well, we're jumping back in after that little break here. And as we catch up, it is Falcon going to go ahead and retreat, regenerate, and get ready for the next objective push. Still, it was a two for two trade. Falcon having quite a bit of immortalities available to them as well. But still, like Arashi mentioned, RQ's gotta be able to solve the issue of Zipex, take out that impactful damage, and meanwhile, even avoid all those iron hooks that have been on point so far from Naomi. And on that note, we saw that play in the bottom side where Naomi was able to hook Skylar despite everyone being in the same spot. RRQ need to coordinate and again, decide who needs to take the iron hook. Worst case scenario, if it cannot be dodged. But if you look at the items right here, R7 already adapting his build, going for the blade armor instead, ensuring that he needs I don't know, to survive just a bit longer, be that much more annoying for Zipex to deal with. But of course, with all the items completed for Zipex, including the highest claws, there's a chance he can just out sustain the damage coming in from a semi tank joy. Well, right now, Conceal Play gonna come out here. I think they just wanna avoid these hooks. Skyler picking up the corrosive scythe. That's gonna be a key pickup for this Claude as they try to figure out how to get the back, get to the back line of Falcon. You know, right now, this is the point where Falcon wants to use the lane advantage. They want to try to keep that bottom lane pushed in so that RQ has to keep on sending someone over. They have the minion advantage. They have a big macro play here. I don't think they need to be too aggressive, honestly. They could have an easy Lord. The only advantage that RQ has, though, is this Joy, who should be able to clean that lane very quickly and still move so fast back to the Lord pit. On the issue of turrets as well, there's only one being taken by RRQ. Uh -oh. The rest of the turrets are available, but look at that. Ooh, Yellow Flash gets brought very low, but then gets hooked in. Albert trying to help out. R7 in the backside trying to lock on to Zipex. Zipex is too bulky. R7 wants it, forced to retreat now. Namir's Pash comes out, and Justin finds R7. Next might be Albert. He's a bulky boy, though. Snipe shot comes in. Immortality pops. Albert still on the field, not enough. Ken finds him. Now it's three up against five, and a luminous lord on the field. 
This is rough. That was a rough time to get picked off in a bad position there. Skyler, if you notice, he couldn't even join that fight because he was half health. And somehow Yellow Flash was able to attach himself to Skyler, forcing him even further back to heal up. And just like that again, Falcon grabs himself a Lord, looking to siege the base of RRQ. Most definitely Falcon gonna move in onto this inhibitor. They break it down. Play Vin. Vin's gonna get hooked. Can't finish the Tyrant's Revenge. Will go down. Zipex picking it up. Skyler with the blazing duet though. Naomi brought low. Able to get away with a sliver of health. R7 trying to help out, but Ken is now here. He has an immortality, so you know he's ready to go. Minions do land on. Lord has not spawned yet. I don't know if Falcon wants to push so deep, but they have a huge gold advantage. Lord finally on the field now. Falcon gonna think about how they want to do this push. They're just sieging slowly but surely, and that range advantage is just so annoying. And we can see that Skylar, he can't even go in full towards the back line. He just has to try and dance around and use the max range of the Blazing Duet. And Clay gets chucked down, and Falcon makes their move! And Albert trying to push this Lord a little bit to the bottom side. Ken comes in, Albert, R7, very, very low. Lord. Albert goes down first, Lord onto the base. Falcon closing the distance, bridging the gap, and taking us to game number five. We wouldn't want it any other way. I love Five Mobile Legends. games is what we want here in this type of match. And at the same time in this triple header day, crucial, crucial game ahead of us, Sarashi. It's a chance for Falcon to come in with a reverse sweep, and that is a scary prospect for RRQ. The momentum right now is on the side of Falcon because of their two insane performances, and we know for a fact that RRQ, occasionally, they do struggle in that mental aspect. That is the main question that a lot of